We are leaving now. Um, Saturday's car was all going to be something completely different, but Sunday's car was always going to be the Urs Performante. Um, it's good or just cancelled Saturday, as many of you may know, because of the wind. Um, but today's a fine day. We're taking this car down for its first cross country journey. And um, yeah, we're going to have fun. I'm going to film and bring you some content. And I've just remembered I've left my um, entrance tickets in the house, so I need to go back and get them. I'm walking into the shot, but we're late and I've got all the stuff in my hand. I've got my tickets. So we've got Ferrari tickets, but also I've got media tickets that we're going to use today as well. Um, is this the right ticket that I've put in here? Heading down in the Earth Performante, we're going to jump on some back roads in a minute to get to Goodwood Festival of Speed. That way I can give you a good assessment of the Earth Performante's on road, back road, side road, left road behavior um, and see how it stacks up against the Cayenne Turbo GT because I have taken the Cayenne Turbo GT down here. I love that this car is like a supercar, but it's so comfortable. Yeah, I mean, like, it is a, like, it is a is Lamborghini. It a I wouldn't call it, a, obviously, it's an SUV. It's a super SUV, if you say. But super is SUV. it, can it stand next to a supercar? I'm not sure. Jeez, this car's all right. This car can freaking move. So, in the Kaya Turbo GT on some UK back roads, <laughs> as you can see. This car, um, it does its best at hiding its way. It is very, very maneuverable. That four wheelster in the back, kicking out the back when you need it to. Um, it feels planted, there's not much body roll. It's got those 48 volt system anti roll bars. It handles so well for an SUV. Now, does it handle better than the Cayenne Turbo GT? I'm not sure. This definitely feels a bit more artificial, a bit more disconnected, but at the same time, they have a very, very similar um, chassis setup. This is probably as good as you can get with an SUV. Um, as you guys may know, if you haven't seen it on the channel, you can see the video on my page where I drove a Pura Sangue in Italy, the Ferrari, super, super SUV or FUV, they're not called an SUV. And that is still the better handling vehicle, but this car does a massive job on improving on what the Urus could already do. Here's our tickets for today. We've just arrived at Goodwood Festival of Speed. I'm going this way, this guy's doing this way. That's, that's not the exit, bro. Oh look, it's for me, it's like us, a little yeah. bit. Talk to me. How you doing? You right? Oh, yeah, of yeah, 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 of course, of course. <laughs> I feel so rude being in my right. car. <laughs> nice one. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> So we've just arrived, Goodwood Festival of Speed. I've got my wireless microphone, so hopefully it should help. It's a very windy day. Usually, I used to, anyway, that's microphone stuff. We're in performance car parking. We've got loads of cars around us. I would go through all of these cars, but there's actually no need because um, we're at Goodwood. So let's uh, get in and get ready to uh, appreciate some Goodwood. <laughs> So um, the race cars are preparing, I don't know why I'm shouting at you, the race cars are preparing to go up the hill, um, but we need to get a move on to see interesting stuff. Um, why is everyone standing still? Loud. Loud is what it is. <laughs> There you Thank go. you very much. Nice one. Thank have you, a good you. one. Enjoy you your uh, good with. You should have got a Mercedes hat though. I'm not sure about the <laughs> Red Bull one. Ah, <laughs> oh, my eyeballs. Uh, what do you love most about coming to Goodwood? Um, the thing I love most about coming to Goodwood is getting dust in your eyes. Special. Yeah. Yeah. This feels too small. Yeah, refined. Like, Where I don't know. You know. What's your name, sorry? Thomas. Thomas, nice to meet you. So um, yeah, back to the Rivolto. I have ordered one, we've got one on the way. Not in this amazing orange color though. It's actually a surprise, the color that the car's gonna come in. But again, like I was saying, it's got the electric powertrain and the petrol VTOL engine. They kept it naturally aspirated. It's not as uh, loud as the event store, it's a bit more quiet. Um, there's one doing a hill run here, but I think it looks gorgeous. I'm interested to get it and see how it drives. It is heavier than an Aventador, so it'll be interesting to see how they combat that. Although technology has moved on since the Aventador was revealed, since it was released. So hopefully this will be a, a nice um, new feeling, even though it's heavier and quieter. And it, um, that sounds like loads of negatives. It has um, more comfortable seats. There's a positive view. But yeah, let's um, look at other things because I always show you Lamborghinis. The driver reckons potentially Revelto Spider in camo. Oh, we CC think so. Well. The factory, but They're definitely going to make one, man. So Lamborghini's newest race car joining the family. Um, 
I think they uh, saw what Ferrari did and said, you know what, we can do it better. It does look gorgeous. It's their entry for next year, so we're going to see how it performs. I and I look like a nightclub. Nothing says good with like daytime fireworks. So. Here we have the Koenigsegg Gemera, my favorite car of good with festival speed. It looks insane. As you can see, it's got a pearlescent green two-tone paint. It's also got a brand interior. I think what makes the car special for me is the fact that it's the four-seat two-door hypercar with 2,300 horsepower, the fastest zero to 60 of any production car right now, including the electric cars, and also an incredibly high top speed that they haven't announced yet, but trust me, it will be insane. We know Koenigsegg, we know the technology. It's got the hot V8 from the Jesco, well, it's got a Jesco engine, but this time with a hot V8 inside, and you can also get it with an inline three if you want to save some money. Um, a cool 2.3 million, 2.4, 2.5, depending on how you spec it, um, and that's starting. <laughs> so uh, let's check out some more. So this is the interior of the Koenigsegg Chimera. Um, it's such a high quality interior. Exposed carbon on this one. You've got screens in the back, heated and cooled seats. You have the dihedral, dihedral, dihedral doors. Sorry, we're just ruining everyone's view of the car. More news coming on this soon. Um, something exciting may be happening or not. It depends on how things go, but yes. Um, and if you come back here, this is one of my favorite parts of the car. The fact that you have the hot V8 sitting there, but you also have space for four luggage containers. Um, they had to rework the engine in order to make it fit inside the Jamera, but they managed to do it, I don't know how, because that was built for, again, an inline three. Here we have the one for Koenigsegg CC850. So this is a homage to the CCS of a while back, or, and the CCX, I guess you would say. Um, one thing that's really cool about this is Koenigsegg made it a manual like a virtual manual, I should say. So it's got a manual gated shifter inside that actually works. It's got a clutch, or you can put it in automatic mode. It's all controlled electronically. It's very, very smart stuff. Apparently Christian von Koenigsegg got the idea from um, a sim rig with a manual gated shifter. And he was like, why can't I do this in a car? So they built it, but it is very nice. It's got a different profile to the original car. It's wider, it's lower. Bugatti, um, Bugatti Belit, um, a race car. Um, funnily enough, they made it for tracks, but um, I can't see anyone actually taking it to a track. This one's full exposed carbon fiber. It's not even gloss carbon fiber. It's just raw carbon fiber. <laughs> so my wife was just saying she loves exposed carbon. I was just yeah. explaining to her. Exposed carbon is always an expensive option because carbon panels normally, when they're painted, they can be messy and they can go in all different directions. When it's exposed, they have to do it neatly and line it up so it tends to take way longer. But um, yeah, I've never seen this car before. Um, the exposed carbon is nice. I'm glad you like carbon now. I think. So now when the next car turns up exposed carbon, don't complain. I mean. So it's the AMG Project Wide. AMG's hypercar with a V6 Formula 1 engine from 2015, I think, the engine is like this. Um, it took them ages to develop this car just to get it to comply with regulations. They finally got everything sorted. It went on sale and now they've got stops in on them. One set on fire by itself, unprovoked while it was being transported. But other than that, I think the car looks amazing. I really, really like the AMG Project 1. I know it's not everyone's um, cup of tea, but I think it's a nice tell of the future of what performance and hypercar is going to be. So here we have the Lamborghini Rivuelto again, this time a road version. I love how Lamborghinis have now left spaces for license plates to go on their cars because for some reason they have been very opposed to doing that in the past. Um, again, it is a naturally aspirated V12. I'm looking forward to hearing it go up the hill and I'm also looking forward to seeing it move and how it handles, how it, how it grips the road because again, it is heavier. It does have significantly more weight than an SVJ, more than an SF90 um, because of all those hybrid components in the battery. Although it is a very tiny battery in this car, I believe it's about seven kilowatt hours, if that. But um, I think it looks amazing. Um, ours comes soon, I think. When I say soon, I mean within the next two years. We're not actually quite sure because Lamborghini haven't told us, um, but this isn't the spec we chose. We've spoken, chosen a very interesting spec or we've been guided to choose a very interesting spec. So look out for that. But also one thing I noticed, this has the sports seats from the Hurricane STO inside. Um, you can't actually spec that online on the configurator, but now that I've seen that you can get these seats in person, I may ask the factory to make an exception for me. Hopefully they have more seats ready to go. I think this car looks absolutely insane. Um, it's very quiet when the engine's just on idle like it is now. It's just running so they can do some of the movement stuff. Hello, AMG Hi. man. And, and this, you don't have to pretend to shout. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually one of my favorite cars, the Hyundai Envision. Um, I think it looks so stupidly good. It reminds me of something old. It reminds me of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Even the interior gives me old school vibes and I'm ruining this guy's video, but this looks crazy. I think without a wing, 
I would drive this. It is an EV. I think when they first announced it, it was a hydrogen um, powered car, but I'm not sure if it's just full EV now. I need to do my research on that because I have no clue, but it is glorious. Look at the details. I feel like these LED lights just speak to that whole retro style in what they call it, steampunk. Yeah, it gives that, it gives, or cyberpunk. It gives cyberpunk vibes. But here's a nice selection of track only Ferraris. We have the 599 XXX Evo. We have the FXXK, K standing for Curse, I believe, because it has a Formula One Curse system. And then you have the car that's been causing quite a stir since it was a nice, the KC23. Let's go and take a look at it. It's a one off um, Ferrari track car, and it's, again, early track legal. But it looks really cool. I think it's one of the best looking Ferraris that we've seen for a while. Um, and it's got updoors, which are always a win for me. Sorry, I'm just ruining your space, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, here it is. I can see like the Pista influences, the SP3 Daytona influences, the wonderful, again, updoors. Um, I just think it looks gorgeous. This looks crazy. It doesn't look like a Ferrari, but I guess it's speaking to how they're venturing out of their Pinaferino roots and going everything in-house, and then they're bringing more daring and more interesting things to market. But I don't know, I say to market, you can't buy this because there's only one in the world. Very to the point. Coffee and cakes, burger, fries, traditional fish and chips. Oh, Christian, hello. I'm Koenigsegg, London. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought I'd come over and say hi. We're going to head over there. I'm doing a passenger ride in the Regera. Oh, yeah. Good so, um, for you. yeah, <laughs> pleasure to meet you there. Well, really nice to meet you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll see you at the factory. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? No, good awesome. Thank you. you. Here's my wife, uh, Camille. This is Adam Camille. from Koenigsegg, nice London. I just met you. Christian von Koenigsegg. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're just talking like it was just really chatting, cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, just having a catch up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is this is awesome. It's very comfortable. Yeah. And then I like this four cup holders, so I can have two of my drinks, and my wife behind the camera and can have two of hers. Yeah. So my baby boy can have four milks, ready to go. <laughs> the seats are way more comfortable than they should be. Yeah. That's insane. Oh, how much space yeah, in the back. back as well? I'll jump in the back. Yeah, wow, yeah, we wow. have a whole family in here. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Look, four human sized adults um, can fit in here. Unlike. <laughs> really yeah, and it's really comfortable. It is Unlike um, my other supercars or the cars I've had with four seats usually, you can only fit someone with no legs in the back. But this is absolutely perfect. That's something that's really important for Christian mm -hmm. that the feel should be premium. Yes. Because it is a premium car. Mm -hmm. And we can't do cheap uh, stuff. We yeah. can't <laughs> take shortcuts. You have your cup holders, you can control your heating and chill. So depending on if you have coffee or if you have a milkshake. That's insane. You of course have your seat heating, everything like that. You can control the rear as well. <laughs> You have settings, everything you expect, your locking, steering, performance, track control, tire temperatures, tire temps. Uh, or let's flip the exhaust ports to the inside. Okay. To fit the twin turbos. Uh, That's the V8 yeah. okay, wow. with the turbos and the uh, Wow. I'm so annoyed because um, I recorded loads of Koenigsegg content and then I found out that my audio wasn't recording properly, which is a bit annoying. But um, we're here walking around. Oh, Storato in orange, like the one we spec. This is satin orange. Ours is actually um, metallic orange, but we're going to do satin PPF over to give this style. I actually like it in satin orange, you know. Okay. So should we just do a satin orange like this? I still want to do my um, umber face. Yeah, I think so as well. Now we're at Casa Ferrari at Goodwood. We have perfect, perfect view of the track. Um, it's nice in here. Ferrari have the best view. Rob there. Rob's got a great pista. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Our tour a GT car ready to go out. Um, we're waiting to cross so we can go over to Rolls Royce, but um, we're here at the moment. Um, you've got this nice sculpture that was made specially for this event. They actually had to take it down and put it back up because they thought yesterday's wind would send it to the the afterlife, oh, but, but apparently not. But yes, McLaren, McLaren, McLaren. G1 GTR, but I think they're gonna go, so I might cover my ears now because I feel like it's going to be loud. Some of the cars have turned off in order to save the entrance because they're not meant to see an idol. Save the gearbox as well. Whoa, whoa. Clapping, clapping, should I clap? Nice little Jaguar. 
operated. Nice. Hyundai. Race car engines. This is McLaren. Car and six. Oh, oh yeah, they're wearing the kit. Oh, it's a lady driving. Yeah. Okay, yes, it's a Benetton Formula One car. Benetton Formula One car. Looks like we've known each other for years. I know. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Have a great Goodwood. And See you later, man. Have a good one. So welcome to the classic car paddock, Diablo GT. This was my favorite car growing up um, when I was a kid, after the Countach, obviously. We've got the Bugatti EB110. Funnily enough, those cars actually dropped down to um, very ridiculously cheap prices because no one wanted them. Then Bugatti came back, released the Veyron, and then it became super duper hot. I like this area. It's quiet. It's not like the other areas. So that means when I record, it doesn't sound like I'm shouting, hopefully. Um, over here, we've got a Carrera GT as well, which looks very, very nice. Oh, I had this Nissan on Gran Turismo way back in the day. We're making our way over to um, Rolls-Royce at the moment. I've got some business to handle at Rolls-Royce, some heads to smash. Um, we've got Maserati MC12 from Joe Macari over there. Joe Macari is a supercar and hypercar dealer in London. And it's one of the only ones that I've ever seen with their own parking, which is insane for London. McLaren F1, they weren't that expensive at one point. Now that is probably about 15 million pounds worth of car. And then we have this wonderful Mercedes CLK GTR on the right. This is a really cool car. I had this on Gran Turismo as well. Um, I don't want to know how much this is worth. I had a dream that we had one though, my wife behind the camera. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was in real life, it was a dream. But yeah, let's make our way over to um, Rolls Royce now and get some looks at the Rolls Royce Spectre. Awesome, I'm Chasen. from Qatar. Nice to meet you all from Qatar. Oh, okay, where are you staying, London? Yeah. Oh, we should link up, man. Yeah. Should, uh, what's your, let me, I'll put my number into your phone. Sure. Just drop me your, do you use WhatsApp? Sure, yeah. yeah, drop me a WhatsApp. Welcome to the Rolls Royce packet of Goodwood. Rolls Royce is actually based in Goodwood. We have here a Phantom, we have a Ghost, and the star of the show for me, a Spectre in an olive green. I'm not too big on the color, but this car is very interesting because it's the first full electric Rolls Royce. Um, it suits the brand, it goes with the brand's identity. It's got a massive footprint compared to what it looks like in pictures. But um, let's delve in and take a closer look. Hi. Nice to see you again. Hello. My wife is here. Hello. Hey, Camille. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm infamous at Rolls Royce. I'll be at this section. Hello, do you know who's here? Who? Gary and his daughter from Scotland and the mum. They're here. It's a much nicer Rolls Royce Spectre than the one outside. I don't want to ruin this gentleman's view. We'll walk around the car. So it's an electric car. It's got the battery stored in the platform. It's a similar platform that's used on the i7. It's got a brand new Rolls Royce infotainment system, brand new Rolls Royce chassis dynamics anti-roll system, everything you can think of. And I believe it has four wheel steering as well to shorten the wheelbase compared to things like the Phantom or the Cullinan. Also, if you come around the back, you can see the light signature looking glorious. I think an electric powertrain suits a Rolls Royce probably more than the V12s they were using prior, just because it provides that ultimate version of silence. And um, I think his name was, well, Mr. Rolls and Mr. Royce, I can't remember what their names are, first names, but they actually said that electric would be the perfect platform for a Rolls Royce just because of the pure luxury and elegance that you receive when you have an electric powertrain. Um, this car has a nice hand painted line down the side. Fun fact, there's one guy at Rolls Royce that paints all the lines by hand, freehand. So um, we actually have to go because my new, we did miss time today. My um, baby boy is at home with the nanny and she needs to leave. Uh, BMW's in there, but there's nothing really there that I need to see. And also we're in a rush. Um, so I have like an hour to get home. Um, so yeah, I need to get a move on. My friend Mark's um, SVJ is here, still in all the dust that he collected from Gumball <laughs> with the roof box and the lights. <laughs> I rate it though. It. No, he doesn't clean his cars. That's wow. his vibe. We are on our way home now. Well, we're trying to get on our way home. There's tons of traffic there. Always is leaving good with. We kind of timed this poorly. So many things to do and we had such little time, but yeah, we're making our way back now. I am shattered, like sleepy. But um, 
Other than that, it was a good day. Did you enjoy it? Did you, I loved you it. It yeah. was just nice doing things and being around you and having fun. Oh, well, thank you. I'm tired now. I need to go home, shower, and eat some food. Because we actually didn't eat, we just snacked. Because we didn't have any time at all, so we couldn't even get food, which is annoying. But yeah, it's all, all in the spirit of Goodwood. So. A big shout out also to everyone that came to say hello today. Um, I had a few messages from people saying, I just saw you, but I was too shy, or I was scared to say hi. Um, I don't think I'm a scary person. But um, yeah, shout out to everyone that was at Goodwood. Um, what was your favorite car of the day? Mine was definitely the Jamera. 100% my favorite car. Um, what was your favorite car today? I think the Jamera as well. The Jamera is different, yeah, league, isn't it? it yeah. It's is different. So, Jamera gang over here, but Jamera choir. <laughs> Jamera choir. Uh,